So can you tell me, what is Animal Justice Project? And uh, what is your role in the organisation? Animal Justice Project, we're an abolitionist animal rights group. We predominantly work on the veganism side of things. So mainly, you know, against animal agriculture. Um, but we also do do some uh, vivisection work as well. Mm -hmm. So the group was started in 2014 and was pretty much all vivisection. Um, but, you know, gradually over the years, we've kind of moved towards doing these undercover investigations to highlight the cruelty in animal agriculture. So my job role is, so I'm the senior campaigner, so that effectively effectively means that, yeah, basically my like all parts are kind of like, you know, the website sides, the videos, um, basically what, I, what all of the public sees, that's what I manage. So what are you working on currently? Because I've seen that you're, when you go on your site, there are quite a few things for people to, to see. Uh, as you go on. So what is your current you know, working? The biggest one that we've just launched is obviously the Dairy Still Kills investigation and campaign. So that's part of our broad expired campaign. So expired is kind of looking into the calf industry and calf trade as a whole. So last year we did an investigation which covered the rearing and the fattening of calves because, you know, many people think that most male dairy calves are actually shot on farms but actually you know the dairy industry changes quite a lot and it's been changing a lot in the last um, few years and because of public pressure kind of like dairy companies and supermarkets have been then changing what happens kind of on the farms with the calves so a lot of them are no longer shot they're actually fattened up most of the time and um, so we did our investigation last year to you know cover all of that side of things so we looked at the rearing and the fattening and then there are still as we've discussed in discovered in this investigation there's 65,000 male dairy calves that uh, entered the slaughterhouse last year at less than a month old which is how we basically continued the expired campaign into dairy still kills yeah that's what i find interesting because you know my advocacy people claim that calves that baby uh, cows aren't killed so you know it is interesting that you know how is this happening if people seem to think that this doesn't happen and that we just kind of export or they just grow older so it, i think it's a really important thing to uncover definitely if you compare to maybe you know five to ten years ago the dairy industry and the calf trade is in a completely different position now than it ever has been so you know no no calf has been exported from the uk in in over a year, in a, probably around 18 months now. Calf exports are not banned yet. We're hoping that they will get banned. Um, but yeah, none of them have, they've not been exporting them. So obviously these calves have to go somewhere if they're then not being shot on farm as well, which is probably why, you know, tens of thousands are entering the slaughterhouse because these will be the calves that are unprofitable and unsuitable for fattening. Yeah, this is what I appreciate, appreciate about the project um, is that it's, you know, rights-based approach because and i heard you speaking elsewhere about how you know that's the motivator behind the campaign of dairy steel kills because you know when we're trying to find these excuses as to why this would be justified um you know we're still seeing that these animals are eventually killed or killed as babies so i do appreciate that you know it's not based in welfareism and you have like a solid rights pr approach um which is definitely important i think yeah. to know about a project yeah we don't we never take welfareist approaches you know everything we do we always take the abolitionist stance we don't want any animal exploitation we don't want any animals to be killed so if we're gonna take a welfareist stance then we're we're accepting that exploitation is okay and we don't agree with that exactly because that would that would entail speciesism wouldn't it so what is the significance then on on the ban of shooting calves on farm i know you've gone through it basically but could you kind of refresh yeah sure so over the last few years mostly within the last 12 months various supermarkets and dairy companies and even insurance schemes like red tractor um, have been implementing these new policies which prohibits the shooting of these male dairy calves on the farm so one of the biggest statistics that has kind of been thrown around by activists for quite a few years is that 95,000 male calves are killed, are shot on the farm. But when, you know, we've looked into this so much within the last 12 months, and the latest figure is that that 95,000 has dropped to 60,000. 
which is the latest industry figure. So that's actually a figure that's an average of three different years from within the industry and they've released it as an, av an industry average. So we can see that the number being shot on farm has decreased and it will be because these policies are being um, implemented by the different companies. You know, each of the companies, they have varying policies, that they are quite different. So many of them do have loopholes, you know, some of them, they say they have to, you know, keep the calves within their own supply chain. So they will fatten them all up and that will be the beef that people find in supermarkets. Whereas others, for example, Muller, which is, um, that's who we linked in our investigation. Um, you know, they still allow the onward trade of calves, both at markets and to calf dealers, so they can end up in the slaughterhouse. Oh my God, it's just messed up that we are actually talking, you know, about infant animals. Like we're literally talking about baby animals when we're talking about all these things, but. Yeah, it's, it's very, yeah. very horrific. I mean, like, you know, when we do these investigations, we obviously know it's never nice and we're never gonna find out nice information, but this information is so, so needed and we need to, show the public and actually with this investigation one of the biggest targets that we have as well you know aside from the public and you know vegetarians who are consuming the products it's actually um other vegans and activists as well to kind of bring our knowledge a bit more up to date rather than just saying that these dairy calves are shot on the farm because we know that that's not happening i mean it is happening because there were 60,000 still killed but there was more killed inside the slaughterhouse last year than being shot on the farm and then the biggest proportion are being fattened, which is why last year with our investigation, we put a tagline out there called dairy equals beef, because all of these de male dairy calves are being fattened and you know, sold as beef in the supermarket. And then there's still these 65,000 which aren't suitable. Um, so this is why this year we called it dairy still kills because people celebrated it as a win that these calves are not being shot on the farm but we want to show people that dairy still kills because they just send them to the slaughterhouse instead because there's so many loopholes within the different policies that it, they're still allowed to do that. Yeah, you don't want to see a victory where the victim is still suffering the same outcome. And I think it's really good, especially for people who say are vegetarian for ethical reasons, to know that actually, you know, them avoiding consuming the flesh of animals <laughs> doesn't entail them like not, you know, uh, meeting their death by human, you know, human hands. So yeah, it's very important for mixed different reasons. I was, I was going to say as well, um, you know, it, it is important to keep up to date. Um, and this kind of ties into a question I'm going to ask you in a moment. Um, but it is important for activists to keep up to date with what's happening because if they, if a non-vegan finds something and that they find it to be inaccurate, they're going to assume that vegans don't know what they're talking about. And obviously, because they're so defensive, a lot of the time, you know, that they're being challenged, they, they're just going to hold on to that and uh, assume that we, they don't actually need to go vegan. Everything we just said didn't mean anything. Although, like you know, although the topic that we're talking about is hugely emotive and it's hugely distressing because we're talking about you know calves as young as nine days old going in the slaughterhouse and not coming back out the other side alive um we do need to be very factual mm -hmm. so the statistics that we use you know they're official statistics you can't get them you know in other places so you know we found out these this information from the industry itself that's so the best way to do it relaying, yeah mm -hmm. we're relaying that information um because they're not you know, they don't publicly announce it. Mm -hmm. You know, it might get in the odd media article here and there, but you know, it's not on your bottle of milk when you go into the supermarket, is it? No, and if they, that's the best place to get it because obviously people cry vegan propaganda. And if it's actually coming from the industry, then they can't, yeah. they can't, you know, contend with that. Um, I would, I would ask you, so say the average everyday consumer, what do you think that they need to know you know, about the calf trade, if you could stand with someone who was unaware, uh, you know, you had a few moments with them, what would you say to them? Um, I think I think the most important thing we need to tell people about the dairy industry is that, well, something I discussed the other day actually was that I think people do see dairy more of a, as more of a byproduct. Whereas, you know, like if you see beef in the supermarket, people tend to see that as the product itself. Whereas I think with dairy products, although we clearly know it's not a dairy, um, a byproduct because there's an entire dairy industry. Um, I think that's, I don't know, that's always the vibe that I get. I think people see 
it as kind of a product from these happy cows on these happy farms that are already producing milk and we're just taking it off them because you know they have to be milked um, you know a lot of people are unaware that a cow has to have given birth to produce the milk in the first place just like a human just like you know a dog you know a dog isn't walking around <laughs> producing milk constantly she'll only produce milk when she has babies mm-hmm. yeah so yeah it's the same it's the same with cows and i think we just we we need to show people that you know there's so much dairy that is produced here in the uk how they can possibly believe that every single cow is cre- treated as an individual and with respect and not exploited it's it's completely impossible yeah exactly and when you we should know by now that when you commodify a being their interests you just by the nature of commodifying them aren't going to be considered yeah. so yeah it's it's a big leap and as you say you know with something like flesh it's more in your face it's more evident that that literally was carved off the body of an animal so it's harder to kind of justify doing so but you know because it's a normalized thing you know any added thing that you can add like the red tractor approved label the rspca approved label or you know they oh well we just needed to take this they needed to be milked cows just magically produce um <laughs> uh, like th- th- those are things that people will grasp onto and then use an ex- as an excuse to just carry on not thinking about the things that yeah. happen where this information came from i don't know but it's obviously <laughs> probably came from within the industry itself because unfortunately you know the the animal agriculture industries are incredibly smart with the way that they market things they purposely don't tell the the public where it actually comes from you know you pick up a bottle of milk and it's got an image of green grass on it yeah that doesn't tell any story of how the cow was treated where they live what happens to them you know where their babies go etc and there's so much industry propaganda that is shoved in our faces all the time. You know, you can't walk down the you can't walk down the high street without having adverts here, there, and everywhere. You can't go onto YouTube or TV without seeing these adverts. And nope. you know, nowhere is showing the the actual truth behind the entire uh, um, food industry. So. Yeah, and I noticed something interesting when I went into Tesco because they are very smart. They work very closely with these supermarkets as well. The only oh, place gosh. that really pictured the food item or like the pr- was the dairy aisle where they had like and the um the meat aisle where they had like pictures of cows grazing on fields and it's like i can yeah. almost guarantee zero of these animals like saw grass you know or if they did they only saw it for a moment and <laughs> not that that would justify it anyway but it's amazing that they can sell this idea and they do so subconsciously just like remind you oh yeah th- this isn't what's happening you know th- these horrible conditions exactly. are made up carry on consuming so yeah, it, yeah. it's, it's yeah wild. they look they love to they love to put this really nice happy image in your face as you're buying the product that is literally a dead animal you know they want you to they're convincing you constantly to believe that they had a good life and to it's to ease their conscience obviously isn't it the buyer's conscience and unfortunately majority of the people still believe it somehow yeah i think it's you know you would like a blissful ignorance (laughs) is is quite nice sometimes i guess Mm -hmm. so how do you think um activists can help here to raise awareness about these changes within the dairy industry like what do you think we should start doing when we advocate the most obvious thing to begin with is to basically share our content like please do feel free to go on you know, to go on our websites, if you go to dairystillkills.org, feel free to share everything on there. We want people to be sharing this information, even if it's to other vegans, so people um, are aware that this is happening. Because with this investigation, you know, we investigated um, a calf dealer, so we looked at Oakland's Livestock Centre, and we looked at um, G&G BQ at Slaughterhouse, who was, who was killing the calves. So both of these two parts of the calf trade have never, ever been shown before in this country. Um, you know, dealers and calf slaughter, it's brand new, brand new information. There's been no kind of, you know, statistics or anything um, already within the vegan community on this topic. So we've got so much information which people can share. You know, you can share the web page, um, share our videos, share anything on social media. Yeah, and we obviously have, you know, little actions as well. So we've just, yesterday we were on the streets um, at Barber's Market and was at Muller's head office as well um, in Shropshire. 
and we handed in a petition where we had you know over four and a half thousand people um sign so if you can't join us on the day please do sign the petition beforehand because we are going to speak to these companies and we speak to these companies a lot behind the scenes as well so like, i'm in contact with yeah you know, i've been speaking with muller and um Sainsbury's for example because they're both linked with this investigation so yeah there's there's loads of things people can do I think the best thing is simply share this information um, get to know it yourself as well so you like properly read through it and let it sink in with these new statistics because it's so important that especially if you're doing any form of outreach that we really know our information so you know it's 60,000 that are shot on farm but it's actually 65,000 that were killed in slaughterhouses so it's actually a high statistic so little facts like that I think as well they're, they're the things that are really going to stick with the member of the public as well if you're you know if you're in an outreach situation yeah and in an outreach situation it's really like people are going to pivot to all these different places and try and find something that's going to stick so they are going to probably bring up oh well they're not killed oh well they're taken somewhere else oh well yeah. you know so to, to know at like quickly go oh actually here's the number uh you know something really brilliant and i know that you've just gone through how you know you were signing petitions outside the the Mueller headquarters obviously the very nature of having this footage available and putting it out online which they obviously don't want you to do but how how, how do you, you know, the Animal Justice Project, uh, you know, plan to like disrupt the UK calf trade? Like, what are your plans? Do you have any going forward? Um, I mean, I think we've, I think we've disrupted it quite a lot so mm. far, to be honest. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if I do say so myself, because <laughs> so yes, yeah, so our investigation last year, which was into rearing um, and fattening, that is also the first time that's ever happened in the UK before. Kind mm. of the the beef side of the calf trade has never really been investigated before. Why you know, is that? So much focus. Um, Do you know, or is it just maybe we focus on the other sides, or I don't know. Yeah, I think it's. I think it may be just a combination of things, really. So you know, investigating kind of within the cow industry, it's it's usually a lot harder. I think because you know, if you go to a chicken farm, the majority of chicken farms these days is literally indoor sheds. It's like a it's like a it's like a warehouse you will see a dead chicken you will see chickens that are stuck on their backs you know can't walk loads of injuries so it's kind of it's kind of easy to show that unfortunately because it's so so common whereas you know on a beef farm or a fattening farm rearing unit for example you really need to do these long in-depth investigations to get the full picture so the one we did last year we actually investigated over five months right and um, chickens aren't even living that long they're not allowed to you know they are bred to just no, quickly go just in and out five weeks old yep. these days mm -hmm. whereas you know actually it's interesting because the calf industry and the beef industry is going that way as well so the farm we investigated, um, you know, it's classed as a mega farm because they, they rear so many animals, well, fatten so many animals every single year. Um, you know, it's, it's a few thousand animals. And basically that's the way that that industry is going as well. These mega farms are increasing in the UK and the intensity is increasing. So the number of animals on every single site is increasing it's the same with the dairy industry as well and also you know zero grazing so where the animals don't go out to fields at all that that's increasing both within the beef sector and the dairy sector too but yeah so going back to how we've kind of how we're tackling industry is that i think a first step is what we've done is to investigate the industry and show people exactly what it's like so that's what we did with rearing and fattening and then we wanted to do this with slaughter as well so yeah you know with all four of these parts the the rearing the fattening the the dealers even the markets really because obviously we went to two different markets as well and the slaughter these are all things that have never been shown before so I think for us to affect the industry, we need to educate people first to get people on board. So then we have, you know, more information, more numbers to change the industry itself. So this is how our investigations seem to work so well. Um, yeah, and of course, like every every bit of like vegan footage out there or animal footage um, that does compel people. You hear about the most, what you would see as perhaps trivial thing, making people make the connection. It was the dairy industry for me that really honed in yeah. that actually it's not just this thing where or, or we're horrible and merciless to animals in different countries or it's only a certain type of person who does it. It's actually all of us. 
um, who participate yeah. in this. So yeah, I, I think not having any area that's like secret where they can pretend they do some magical fairy dust sort of work yes. in order to, you know, to look after the animals uh, would be brilliant. Uh, so really, it's just a case like, you have mentioned, you know, sharing out and everything, but are there other ways that people can support the, the project? Once we release information, please do share it, please sign the petitions, do all these actions, join us on the streets, do as much as you can. Um, you know, order our leaflets, go post them through people's doors, etc. I'm sorry for the cattails that keep popping up. <laughs> Never apologise for cattails. <laughs> <laughs> My cat's in this window. <laughs> you can take all of these actions. We try to make it as accessible as possible. You know, if, if you can't get out onto the streets, please do our online actions. We run online rallies we do you know we try to keep it as broad as possible to encompass as many people as possible and we try and you know with online rallies we'll pre-write things um for people to you know copy and paste or we do like little twitter links where you can literally click a link and then send it within just a few seconds and we'll send you 50 of those for an online rally so you can send out you know 50 lots of information tagging in various people um, in such a short period of time so yeah please you know do all of these things um but to help us in the future the most important thing is you know supporting us as a group and donating to us because you know animal rights organizations are completely reliant on public donations you know we've just released some new merchandise as well so we're trying to you know find new ways of well not new ways because i've merchandised for a while but find find ways where people can donate and get something in return if they want to. So we've got, you know, new dairy merchandise. So you can buy yourself some merchandise, which is, you know, organic and printed in this country. And it's, you know, created by a vegan designer as well. And it will fund our future investigations. So our investigation, our next investigations that you might see could have been funded from your, well, they will have been funded from your donations or if you've bought any of our leaflets. Um, you know, bought any of our merchandise. So it's it's so, so important. You know, we don't want to just keep, you know, we don't want to kind of shout out that we're, we're asking for people's money, but, you know, that's what keeps animal rights organi organisations afloat because, you know, when we do these in-depth five-month investigations, you know, costs obviously do mount up. Mm -hmm. they, do, they do. And yeah, obviously, because you've got a team of five, is that the case? Yeah, there's kind of like five or six core members, like core team members. Mm -hmm. We do have, you know, a few volunteers, which are absolutely fantastic. So yeah, but we are we mm -hmm. are a very small team, especially compared to some other organisations. Yeah. So the outgoings as is are going to be expensive. So obviously, yeah. So if people can support you by doing that way or maybe doing fundraisers, you know, I do fundraisers on my yeah. channel. So maybe that could be something in the future. Yeah, there's various ways. It's like on Facebook, you could do fundraisers. We put mm -hmm. donate buttons on there. We have a fundraiser mm -hmm. going at the minute on Instagram. Um, or yeah, as I say, go to the website, buy some merchandise, or you can sign up for like membership packs where you get things in return. Um, or if you don't want anything in return because you know you don't want some extra stuff lying around you can just simply donate or like you know sign up to monthly giving so you know the more people who sign up monthly we can plan ahead because we know that mm -hmm. you know the money will come in to cover investigations and we can show more parts of the calf trade um and other things as well because obviously we have other campaigns like the foul truth which cover chickens and, and ducks so it's mostly like most of the bird work and then yeah with various campaigns and investigations so Oh, fabulous. Well, thank you very much for coming yeah. on. And hopefully you know, the links will be below in the description to ensure that you can find Animal Justice Project. So there's no excuse. And they also have a YouTube channel that you can subscribe to. Get yourself involved so that you you can be part of it. Know when campaigns are happening. You can find out the information. Um, you know, because this is it's intensive work to even go to these places to begin with and compile the footage to see these animals yeah. suffering in such a way. So please make it worthwhile by obtaining the knowledge and using it and distributing it uh, because the work's been done for us so let's use it but yeah thank you very much for coming on Artin yeah, I, thank I, you I, so much I, for having me yeah. yeah thank you very much uh, I do hope you're well to all who have watched thank you very much and until next time I'll see you soon <laughs>